Hello and welcome to this tutorial. This one is going to be focusing on binary logistic regression using R. So I've been meaning to do this video for a while now, but really haven't felt like it. I've got around to digging now. So I'm going to start off with um, some kind of introduction and going over the assumptions required about binary logistic regression. And if you want to skip all that, you already know it, but you just want to know the code and how to test it in R. Just skip ahead until you reach that point. Shouldn't take too long. So what, what is a binary logistic regression? In a nutshell, logistic regression is multiple regression. Isn't everything. But with an outcome variable that is binary, so one and zero, yes or no, male, female, and predicted variables that are continuous or categorical. In its simplest form, this means that we can predict which of two categories yes or no, survived, not survived, correct, incorrect, etc, etc. We can predict which of those two categories a person is likely to belong to given certain other information. So your independent predictive variables. There are some assumptions. Assumption one, your dependent variable should be measured on a dichotomous scale. So example, correct coded as one and incorrect coded as zero. Two, you need to have one or more independent variables, which can either be continuous or categorical. Three, you should have independence of observations and the dependent variable should have mutually exclusive and exhaustive categories. So these are not repeated measures done over the same participants over multiple time periods. You wanted to use that, you would have to go and implement a multi-level model, which this video is not going over. Or there needs to be a linear relationship between any continuous independent variable and the logit transformation of the dependent variable. But five, this linear relationship mustn't be strong enough that collinearity exists. Right, those are the assumptions. So why is it actually called a logistic regression? The logistic transformation, which was originally suggested by Johnson in 1949, is applied to analyze responses that are restricted to a finite interval, so dichotomous 0 or 1, the so-called bounded outcome scores, so they can only get one or the other. It's not an infinite range of possible scores. These bounded outcome scores often have a non-standard distribution, that's a J-shaped or a U-shaped distribution, which precludes, eliminates classical parametric statistical approaches. So classical parametric statistical approaches have the requirement that an approximately normal distribution has been as shown in the data. So applying the logistic transformation on a normally distributed random variable gives rise to the logit normal, the LN distribution. And this logit distribution can take on a variety of shapes, such as the dichotomous 0 and 1 male and female distribution. So that is why we call it a binary 1 or 2 logistic. So applies the logic transformation, allowing some type of parametric statistical analysis tests to be run. Right, so now that that's all sorted out, let's go into R and uh, see what we can do. So I've already sorted out this code. I should be linking it in the description. If I don't link it, if I forget to link it after I upload the video, just shout at me in the comments and I will I'll upload it. I've saved it somewhere. Right, so we're gonna need a couple packages in order to completely run the script I've written here. So I'm going to be using sjplot, sjmisc, which is kind of like an add-on for um, the sjplot package, and using the question r package. And I'm actually not using the binome tools package, so just three packages. Right, so let's scroll down, open up a bit, right. I'm going to be using this data set, which is kind of, which is the Titanic, you know, the whole uh, tragedy, Leonardo DiCaprio, 
the Titanic um, survival rates based on certain variables. So you survived the Titanic crash or you didn't survive the Titanic crash. And I'm using a, just a small subset of variables in this one. So one categorical, one continuous variable, and then with the outcome variable of um, survived or not, so dichotomous. I've selected the first 800 rows of participants. And as a, an example, as a head of the data set, data frame we're working with, we have the survived, so the outcome variable, zero and one. Zero is um, unfortunately not survived, and one is survived. The sex of the survivors or non survivors, and the age of the survivors or non survivors. So I mentioned earlier that the distribution of a dichotomous variable is often u-shaped what i mean by this is that if we just run a histogram on the outcome of survived we'll see that it's um there's a bunch of scores on the zero on the x-axis and a bunch of scores on the one that represents them survived or not survived and there's nothing in between whereas a normal distribution is that's really not normal distribution so but it peaks in the middle and then it goes slowly down on either side, all right? So this is definitely not a approximately normal distribution. So in the assumptions I mentioned that you needed to see if any continuous variable is linearly related to the logic transformation of the outcome variable. However, you can't, it's the logic transformation itself isn't as simple as such, say a, a log transformation. So just to start off with, I'm going to be doing a, a basic correlation between the outcome as a, as a dichotomous variable, an untransformed dichotomous variable, and our continuous variable of age. So just to call it a test, correlation test, Pearson's correlation test. You can see that uh, the correlation is pretty weak. So there's definitely no multicollinearity involved. But um, whether it exists as a linear trans as in a linear relationship between survival um, is relatively questionable. But we're just going to go along with it and see what the results show us. So our six, just to make sure that we understand how our data is coded, we can type in contrast data and six. It shouldn't be data; it should be train. And we can see that our females are coded as zero and our males are coded as one. Right, to start off with, we're going to be doing a kind of iterative model, starting off with one predictor and then another predictor and then seeing how those predictors interact. So we're just going to start off by saying um, model one, which is what we're calling our model, and assign to the assign model one, the function of GLM, which stands for generalized linear model, survived, which is our outcome variable, split between or predicted by six, right? That's, just, that's our whole um, linear equation. Just saying the survival is the chances of survival, the probability of survival different between males and females. And we're having a family, a binomial family. So it has, it's essentially a, a dichotomous family, binomial distribution, and we're using a logit link. So this allows, this logit link allows the logit transformation between the outcome variable as opposed to being just a non parametric U shaped distribution. And then our data is trained. Our data set, our data frame is trained. So we're going to run this model and then we're going to have a look at it. All right, so we can see our deviance residuals, so essentially a test of the fit of the model. And what's important here is our coefficients. All right, so we have our intercept, which is um, the chance of being zero. And uh, here we have our six, and we can see that because We've coded our sex as male and female. We can see it. This one is using male as the reference category. So this is showing what the chances are of a male surviving as compared to a female. And we see our estimate is zero, negative 2.54, and that is significant. Well, 
the below 0 0.05 definitely. In a quick interpretation is these negative 16, negative 15. That's how many zeros there are before it becomes a full number. So 0 0.00000, 0 16 times 2. That's essentially what um, a scientific notation is saying. In other words, there's a significant difference between male and females in their survival rate. So what this estimate represents is the log odds. Now, if we have an exponential transformation, so if we applied another transformation to our already larger transformation, then we get the odds ratio for a one unit increase in the variable. In this case, it will give us the log odds for survival between males and females. So if we applied the exponential transformation to our coefficient representing the log odds of males surviving of females, which is the exp, x function in parenthesis, our coefficient, we get our odds ratio for male to female survival rate of 0 0.078. However, instead of doing this whole reverse transformation, you can use the odds dot ratio for our model, which is from the question R package. And you can type this smash enter and it will give you the 95% confidence interval as well, which is pretty useful. So you can say for males, the odds ratio of surviving compared to females is 0 0.07, which is not really that great. So if you're a male on the Titanic, your odds of surviving are quite small. And we can use the plot model function. So plot model, then our model one, which is what we've called our logistic regression model up here. And as a, we only want to have a, a prediction model. How does gender predict the survival outcome? We can just run this model. And here we go, we can see that the probability of survival is substantially higher for females than it is for males, which explains the massive significance values in that test. Essentially, you got less than 20% chance of surviving, <laughs> as predicted by our model, if you were in the Titanic and male. So let's have a look at model two. So model one used a categorical variable. Model two is going to use a categorical variable, sex, as well as a continuous variable, age. Right, so let's run it. So it's because we're adding another variable in, an additive model, we're just going to add sex plus age. And then run it and then see the summary. I don't know why summary shouldn't have train and model. Summary model two. Make sure it is actually model two. So survived sex and age. Right. So we can see age here, an estimate of negative 0 0.004 and a p value of 0.515 is not significant. And we can also compare models one and two using the ANOVA function. So ANOVA model one and model two, because that's what we've named our models. And this will tell us our difference of deviance. So how so deviance is a type of model fit. The lower the deviance, the better fit the model is to the data. So a model with lower deviance is generally better than a model, or better at predicting an outcome than a model with higher deviance. So we can also use a little chi-square test to determine if this deviance is significant, statistically significant. So we have our we're going to name, we're going to apply this, the deviance between models one and model two, which is, shows us over here, it's 0 0.42. We're going to give it the function of deviance or the name of deviance. And we're going to go one minus the p, so give us the p value, chi square of deviance and degree of freedom. So we're going to run that and they'll give us a p value showing us if the deviance between these two models is significant, statistically significant. And a p-value of 0 0.51 suggests that it's not really that significant.
And so we can also see, we can plot our models to see um, exactly what this relationship looks like. And you can see that there's a bit of a negative correlation, not very strong, with massive confidence intervals as they go along to 80, because I suppose in 1914, when the Titanic sank, there weren't that many 80 year olds. They just didn't live that long. Wish they didn't live that long and go on cruises. So, even though there seems to be a negative correlation between age and survival rate, it's not really not significant. Model 3 is going to be looking at an interaction effect between sex and age. So, does it change as both as an individual gets older or younger and as they and if they're female or male. So you can see that we use an asterisk as opposed to a plus. So this is a multiplicative model as opposed to an additive model. And that allows us to look at the main effects of sex and age as well as interaction of sex and age. And again, we're using a binomial model with a logic link function and same data sets. We're gonna run this, look at the summary, and we can see that there is indeed a significant interaction between sex and age, even though there's no significant main effect of age, and but there's still a continuing effect of continuing main effect of sex itself. But the interaction effect is significant, and that's what we're focusing on at the moment. This is our third model a better fitting model when it includes the interaction between sex and age, as opposed to the main effects of sex and age? Well, we'll have a look. So ANOVA, Model 2, and Model 3, that gives us a deviance of 5 point, a difference in deviance of 5.21. Overall, Model 1, or Model 2 in this stage, has a deviance of um, 819, and Model 3 has a deviance of 814. So Model 3 is the better fitting model, but is this significant? We'll run our deviance. We're going to give the deviance name the value of 5.217. That's the difference between these two models. And we're going to subtract it from one and looking at the, the deviance here and the degree of freedom between the two models, because there's only two models, the degree of freedom is one. And we're going to run this and we're getting a score of 0 0.022, which is significant. So model three is significantly better fitting model than model two. And now let's have a look. So we're going to plot the model. And so it's model three. And this, we're going to be looking at the interaction effect. So a type is int here, whereas previously it was just predictor. Here we go. We got age, very young, <laughs> very young kids. 0.67 years, one extreme, and then 80 and the other extreme. So young kids or young young age in red and old age in blue. You can see that between between male between females and males, and we can see that younger females had a slightly lower chance of survival rate than older females but younger males had a slightly higher survival rate than older males. So older females are more likely to survive than younger females, whereas younger males are more likely to survive than older males. So perhaps their um, their fathers sacrificed their spot on the boat for them, but the grandmothers definitely didn't save a spot on the boat for their granddaughters. And that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. If it was, maybe give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.